everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of the Boyfriend Proof Podcast. This is your host, Monica Asmi. I am so happy to have created a platform for everyone to share their stories. I have a great lineup of guests who are ready to share their hashtag Boyfriend Proof story on this podcast. And before I introduce our guests for today, don't forget to follow Boyfriend Proof Podcast on Instagram if you want to be a guest on the next episode and you have a relationship story that you want to share please send me a DM or of course, if you want to stay anonymous, you can send me an email of your story to read on the show. My email is boyfriendproofpodcast at gmail.com. I would love to have you guys on my show. So today on the podcast, we have a very special guest. Her name is Elar Camacho. She is a host of the Quarantine Season podcast where she interviews different people and shares tips on how to cope during this pandemic. She lives in Atlanta, Georgia, and she is an up and coming screenwriter developing and writing TV and feature films with her writing partner, Seda. She's currently on hiatus with her podcast to focus on her writing projects. Hi, Lisette. Hi. I'm so happy to have you on the podcast and thank you so much for reaching out, being on the show. You've been so supportive. I just started my podcast with your like super sweet messages. So like, thank you so much for that. So I'm so excited to like for you to share your story. And before we get into it, do you want to share a little bit about yourself and your podcast? Yeah, I'd love to. So I created Quarantine Season Podcast because I was struggling at the start of quarantine with moving back home with my family. I love them, but it was definitely an adjustment. I found that sharing my thoughts during this pandemic helped me to cope and later found that it helped others cope too. I used my creative platform to help people feel less alone. And I hope with my podcasts and stories, they do just that because you are not alone. I completely love it. I literally feel the same way when you know when we all had to move back with our families. Oh, it was a struggle, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for me, like I just graduated college and I would have to move back to my parents and I thought I was going to get my big girl job and live my best <laughs> life. And then the world shut down. So like, oh my gosh, I, and I know I'm not the only one. So yeah. like, I know everyone literally felt the same way. So I'm so happy that you created something like that for people and I I know it helps so many people. I love it. Thank you. I appreciate it. In this episode, it's all about like sharing your own relationship stories, whether it was like a good or a bad experience. And I know when we were talking, you said you had a particular relationship that you had in mind to speak about. So kind of take us back to that time. Like what happened? What went down? So what happened was (laughs) (laughs) it started off as like finding what I thought was my dream girl online to then discovering that, you know, dreams aren't a a reality and that I deserve much better. Wow. So how did you meet this girl? So let's call her B. (laughs) I met her on OkCupid around October, November of 2018, and then in person in December, 2018. Mm-hmm. On our first date, we went to the movie and watched one of the most lesbian movies ever, <laughs> The Favorite with Olivia Coleman, one of my faves. Wait, isn't she that lady from The Crown or am I? Yes, yes. Wait, really? Yes. Oh my gosh, she, she was in a her. lesbian movie? Yeah. Is and it I just, old? I just, no, it's not old. It, 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 like, um, it was out in the, in, the, in the theaters in 2018, so that's not huh. that old. It won an Oscar too. I need to look that up. Oh my That's gosh, it's good. The, the ending was a little confusing, but I mean, it was really good. You right. try to find as as a as a, as a lesbian, I try to find all the good good ones out there. They're not they're not so many, but the, the good yeah. ones you just hold on them tight, tight, tight. <laughs> no, I know. I literally I feel it. So like that was your first date. Yeah. And how was it? Do you think it was like awkward or? So, so when I first saw her, I was like, oh my gosh, she's real. <laughs> <laughs> That's my initial reaction. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a real person. And then um, like, I wanted to hold her hand and, but it, like, I feel like we were even, we weren't there yet. There was so much more that needed to happen before that step. 
Mm -hmm. Right. So what was, how would you describe the beginning of this relationship? So I knew, I knew, like I told you, I knew when I saw her, I, she, she was someone special. Mm-hmm. She was like, to me, the most beautiful woman I'd ever met and seen and just checked up all the boxes mm-hmm. and just my exact type. And so I come, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican and have family in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands and all over the States. And it has always been important to me to be with someone who has a similar background mm-hmm. and she's of Mexican descent. And so there were a lot of similarities regarding our families. A lot of Hispanic mm-hmm. families are pretty much the same. Right. And also education was a big one and she supported me throughout the craziness of graduate school while mm-hmm. I was doing my MFA in screenwriting mm-hmm. and I saw that we were in we were definitely in our honeymoon stage and it felt really good but I would admit that there were some red flags I ignored yeah. but I saw myself falling for her and we went on adventures and I did things that I never thought I would do right my first proper kiss that I enjoyed was with her I lost my virginity to her. A lot of my first was with her. And that's why she was the hardest to let go. Yeah, it's so crazy when you start dating someone and then you would do things that like you never thought you would do. And it's like then your it's... brain turns off, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And like, like, I know when like, I know when people, well, especially me, I could talk for myself, but like for me, I know it's like, oh, when you're younger, you're like, I'm not going to do this because I'm strong. Yes. yes. There are so many, like, I feel like all the deal breakers that I had set out for myself when I was younger, it was like, that didn't even matter. Yeah. <laughs> it goes right out the window and you're just it goes like, right out the happened? window. It's just, yeah. Yeah. It's like, and then, and then my friends are like, who are you? Like what happened? And then you start thinking that person's like a witch or something. Like what kind <laughs> yeah, of catching some type of spell on me? <laughs> like WandaVision or something. So it sounds like you were really into this girl. Oh yeah. Like oh, full yeah. on. Do you mm-hmm. think do you think that she felt the same way with you or was it one-sided? The way she ex- the thing is is that it's so funny how today's technology works. Mhm. Because people have one way of showing how they feel via text and then how they are in person Mm -hmm. so she was like flirty just like sharing all her gooey feelings to me via text Mm -hmm. ask me if she did that in person she didn't no that's so and and that was a trend of that had had been a trend from all the people that I have been on dates with Oh, so you're saying that like everybody that you every person they're like a totally different person when they text and then in, in real life they're like like uh like you can hear the crickets. That's so weird. <laughs> I just I just never understood it. I never understood it. But she she definitely talked more than the other people. Right. Um, but but still it was just like I, I felt that she was holding back. Right. And then you described that when we were talking that your communication ended your relationships. Like, what does that mean? And like, what went wrong in that? Yeah, because after the honeymoon period, we got deeper and we started spending more time together. But getting to that became one of the biggest issues. So I'm a planner, but I'm open to being spontaneous. Oh, me too, girl. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so, especially being in school, I feel like in this generation, in the generation that we're in, Mm -hmm. we have to plan to hang out with our friends. We don't, we can't just like, just go over there anymore Like because everyone's so busy. Mm -hmm. And so I would plan my day around her and then she would never show up. Hmm. And so she had no consideration for people's time or communicating her, her, her whereabouts. And like, like I would be doing my homework. I said, I'm gonna do my homework in the morning and, and prepare for my tests or whatever. And then she's gonna pick me up at two. So I'll have all that done before two o'clock. Right. Do I get any calls? Do I get any texts? Does did she show up? Wow. No. So wow. this happened many times. And then you would like text at the end. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. 
I just like I don't know what happened <laughs> what the heck like it's just like you know it's just like and so my friends would tell me like why wait why are you wasting your time with this girl why why are you keeping this charade going but I always made excuses for her right and that's like I feel like that's the biggest thing we make excuses for people that we think we need in our lives I always hear the one phrase it's been going around on like TikTok during quarantine if they wanted to they would yeah yeah and it just sounded like she didn't really want to yeah it's just like I I felt like I was doing more work than she was right that's so crazy that she wouldn't even like consider that you're you know planning your whole day and all your activities just so you can see her yeah it's just and and you know I know that she was also going through stuff Mm -hmm. and I tried to do my best to help her I tried to like hear her out but then she like shut me out like a like a like a bag of bricks and just like didn't let me in and I know that I from the past I have shut people out but now like I can't stop talking about my feelings I'm like (laughs) but I I can understand that because she's a little younger than me and I understood that you know some people are just not there yet in their life Mm -hmm. so I would I would again make excuses for her yeah because I feel like that's just like the easiest thing to do when you're so into somebody and you want it to work so bad and you're just like okay, maybe like next month will be better. Next yeah. year will be better. Like, and it's like this, like in between, should I leave or should I continue to like grow this relationship? And you're just like, oh, I don't know what to do. Exactly. Exactly. I was at a loss for words. I didn't know what to do because I had strong feelings for her, but there was just so much that I didn't know. And it was hard because like she didn't even like tell you how she felt half the time. So you're just like, what do I do? Yeah. Like there were just so many red flags. Like it just never felt equal. I felt like at times I was giving more than she was Mm. like for Valentine's day. I celebrate it and she, and, and, but when I told her I do, and she didn't know that. And I, you would think that she would say, okay, well now I know I'm going to make it like a, I'm going to make some effort and just do a little something, even if it's the day after nothing during the holidays. She said, I only buy gifts for my mom, but she would never buy me one. That's so weird. Oh my God. Valentine's day and the holidays are so important to me. I I don't know. Like I just like, and it's like, especially like when you literally see everyone on social media and like out of like grocery stores, like getting flowers and like doing things. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm in a relationship, but, like, I feel left out for some reason. Why? Yeah, like, like, my love language is not gifts, but it's, Mm -hmm. it's up there. It's not my number one, but it's up there, because Mm -hmm. I feel like when you're in a relationship, you should, like, surprise each other, do something here and there. Right. It was just, like, it was, it was nothing, and so, also, too, one of the, the last time I saw her, I cooked for her and she had the audacity to ask me like her, like if I if she was my mother, have you been eating your vegetables? And I'm just what like, you know, what? you don't have to eat this food. Or you don't want to, you know, you could just leave. You really could just leave. What did you cook for her? I cooked her some rice, some Spanish rice and grilled chicken. <laughs> That you wasn't know? good enough for her. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm just like, and like, she would always ask me this. Like every time we saw each other, she would like in some difference, in some form, she would ask me, have you been, have you been eating your vegetables? And I'm just like, you know, this is my life. I could choose what I want to eat and yeah. you your life. And I think that when she moved back with, with her mom, she started to become like her. I'm guilty. Mm -hmm. I am becoming more like my mom, but there are some things that I'm like consciously making sure I don't do the same way. Right. Right. That's like very similar to like somebody like asking, Hey, have you been to the gym lately? Like that just what it sounds like to me. Yeah. And the gift comment, she Mm -hmm. said this in front of my friends and they had, they were just like in complete shock. 
Yeah, that's so weird. I only buy gifts for my mom. Like, who says that? I just had, I just didn't even like, I had, was speechless. And then yeah. look, I, she never introduced me to any of her friends. Hmm. And although she's out to her family and friends, she's even asked me, are you out to yours? As if she wasn't comfortable in her skin. Like she always wanted to prove to me that she was stronger than she actually was and wouldn't let me in to hear her out and help her with whatever she was going through. She just was just like being like the tough guy. Like even when something was wrong with her car and I was like, I can like, um, I can help you. She's like, no, I got it. Wow. I'm like, you know, I, I don't need this right now. I mean, I get treated like that. I, like my family, that's different. You know, my brothers are different. Mm-hmm. Someone you're with, uh-uh, uh-uh. Right. And how long are you guys together? <laughs> three months but in lesbian world that's like <laughs> like a year or so right right oh my god I, I have actually heard that before like, like a lot of my straight friends are like but that was only three months and that's nothing I'm like but it's a totally different field in the lesbian yeah. world because we go so fast mm, yeah yeah I I've heard that before 100 percent which it's is not, it's I know some people try to make it as a stir. I think the U-Haul, I don't like the U-Haul trend, but what the heck is the U-Haul trend? You don't, you don't know U-Hauling? Oh no. Gosh. Like oh what do you God. mean? Like like yeah. moving in? Yeah, yeah. When you move in after the first date. Oh, it was like that, like that's how fast that, it goes. Yeah, yeah, that's how fast it goes. That's so interesting. <laughs> but but some 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 lesbians actually move in pretty quick. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm I'm the type of person that I'm not going to move in until it gets like, you're my fiance, mm-hmm. okay, and we're going to just live with each other. And so get get more acquainted, like so you have a little yeah. sleepovers here and there first, and then, you know, go from there. Because I've just seen so many breakups, and then they're <laughs> like, left with this humongous rent. And I'm just like, I'm not about that life. Yeah, no, I, I'm really I definitely not about agree. that life. That's, yeah. But it, you feel like it went faster in like different ways, basically. Yeah. Not like in the fact of like, oh, I'm moving in with somebody. No, no, no. And it wasn't like moving in. It was in different ways. Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. It was, it was, it was an experience for sure. <laughs> One for the books. <laughs> so I know that like, with situations like that and like red flags and all that kind of stuff like how did you feel like overall I know you might have felt like frustrated at some times and maybe upset with like communication but like how would you describe your feelings towards her and the relationship experience overall so it took time to swallow everything you know of course Mm -hmm. but today I am grateful for the experience because it taught me so much about myself and the type of people that I want in my life full time. Mm-hmm. You can only do so much to help someone. Yeah. I haven't blocked her or anything because I know she's not a bad person. She just has more growing to do to find happiness within herself and just breathe easy by letting go of her past mm-hmm. and just be able to let someone else in. Because also too, she reminded me of myself when I was in that stage of life. And there, there are times that I'm still kind of afraid of letting people in, but It's just, it doesn't happen as often as it was happening with her. And, but we are all a work in progress. And so I believe that we will get, we we will let people in when we're ready. Yeah, it's really tough when, you know, you start dating someone that has like a very strong past and they won't let you in. And it, it's a matter of like, oh, how much like, can you take? Like, are you that person that's really patient or are you not that person? So it's like, there has to be a, I feel like there has to be like some sort of like balance when it comes to that. Absolutely. Cause I tried being as patient as I could ever mm-hmm. be. I tried. And then yeah. at one point I just couldn't go anymore. It was affecting my, like I struggle with anxiety and clinical depression and it was, so that wasn't really helping the situation and I was at school too. So, I mean, it was mm-hmm. a lot to handle. I didn't leave my bed for like two days after I ended it yeah I know the feeling (laughs) you don't want to do anything with your life and you feel like everything's Mm -hmm. over and it's hard it's definitely hard what was like the most memorable or important like situation 
during that time that you can still remember you feel like is very important to you there was there's a poem I wrote that's my poetry book that's coming (laughs) next year early 2023 the book is called because of her and pre-order now (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 and um there was one night that is just it's just it's a picture memory I just watched the the Bren Brené Brown Mm-hmm. Renee Brown, um, her 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 talk on Netflix, and it's like a it, it became a picture memory. So one night it was one event after another, and it was just so many things just wasn't click, what well, wasn't working, mm-hmm. and but we ended up in a Home Depot parking lot, and we had <laughs> sex in the back of her car, and we had mm-hmm. eaten somewhere prior, and I told her I just couldn't wait one more second to be with her. And that way I just couldn't wait. Like we couldn't, I, I couldn't wait right. to like go anywhere else. And so looking back, I never thought I would do anything like that because I was just right. like, look, like when I was younger, I was like, why would people do that? Why can't people just right. like go to the bed? But sometimes you just can't wait. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> sometimes you can't wait. And, you know, it was not the ideal location and I wasn't very and and not very comfortable because it's the back of a car but it mm-hmm. was the experience for sure and I loved it because it it was it was my first time and I'm a, and I'm so happy it was with her because yeah she, she she asked me like if I was comfortable if this was good or this was not good or, or stop this or don't do this and mm-hmm. she she really heard me out and I learned so much about myself because I discovered like I I can't take certain things and uh but I like certain stuff so she 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 taught me how to know what I like about my body she taught me how to just discover explore my body more because I just never did that Mm -hmm. she was like have you masturbated have you done it have you done it and she's like have you I want to make sure the next time you you give yourself an orgasm so I know what to do wow I love this sexual communication that's going on (laughs) yeah yeah so she she taught me a whole lot about myself and I have her to thank for a lot of it wow yeah I think that's really important to like have a little bit of that where it's like it's a positive memory and not like you're looking back at it. It's like, oh my God, everything was awful, you know? Yeah, no, not everything was awful. And I still, and I still, uh, after we ended it, I wanted, I needed a getaway in um, the week in the 4th of July. And, and we just spent one more, well, it was uh, the second to last time together. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but it, it, it just felt so good. Now that that relationship was over how was it like you know getting back into the dating game again you know you were you said that you were on the apps on and off for eight years so what was it like to you know try to date again after that relationship it was tough because every time I went on a date I was looking for her yeah and every person I dated I went on a date with Mm -hmm. and I, I obviously couldn't find her and right. I would just tell my friends, yeah, this is not going to work out. And it was only because it wasn't her, mm-hmm. but then I, I had to continuously remind myself why it ended. So, but I deleted my apps, my dating apps back in May, 2020, <laughs> and it has been much harder to meet people of course, <laughs> um, cause now I'm in the South. Um, yeah. And uh, you can't, you can go into the bookstore cafes, but you can't go into like Starbucks or anything like that. So it's been a little harder, but I feel like for me, my, my dream now is to just meet someone in a bookstore <laughs> or library right? Or, or while traveling the world. I'd love to go to Italy, stay there for a couple of months, find a lover and a wife. Wow. And just live, <laughs> live, that, li- li- live that dream. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. Do you ever feel like, I know that you said that like when you were dating around, you were looking for somebody that was like, like her, basically, they were looking for her in other people. So did you ever feel like it was just so hard to, you know, 
date someone new that you wanted to go back to your ex? Yeah. Yeah. There were times that I did want to go back to her, but I just, I, like I said, I remind myself why it ended and Mm -hmm. I don't need, I don't need that energy bringing me down. And I I have to say, I have to be honest, the sex with her was great, but it wasn't enough Mm -hmm. when she wouldn't even show me her boobs while (laughs) having sex. It's just like, I show you everything and you can't show me that too. That's not fair. And then she don't tell me why ask her, why don't you, why don't you show me them? And you, and, and yeah, yeah, I do sometimes. Uh, no, you don't. What the heck? I ruined the mood, but it's just like, but but you're not you're not being open with me. That's so interesting because you just um when you were describing it like earlier that like you were describing how she was very open about it and like trying to communicate with you, and then like with this part, like she would not talk about it. That's really weird. Yeah, and so like my friends are like half and half mm-hmm. because some of them are like you know, maybe she went through something, but even so right. she can tell me. She, yeah. You're in a relationship. We're in a relationship. We can talk about it. Yeah. And then the other friends are like, yeah, you got to move on because you're not getting any, you're giving her some and you're not getting any hearing everyone's, you know, viewpoints. I'm just like, just tell me what's going on at the end of the day. Just tell mm-hmm. me what happened. Just tell me what's going on so I can make you feel more comfortable. Just like how she, she made me comfortable. Right that night in the back of a car and also it's like that there's like that aspect of like oh she probably just does not trust you at all and it's like okay then like why are you in a relationship with this person if you don't trust them exactly that's so wild yeah there it just it felt like this she was just holding back way too much and it, it, it was just it was just not it was not equal right yeah, that's that's really interesting. But I'm glad that you like you brought it up with her instead of like not saying anything because I feel like so many people when things are are you know bothering them, they don't want to like you're like, oh it's okay, I ruined the mood. I don't care. Like, why won't you do this thing? Yeah, yeah. I it was the last time I saw her in person and I was just like, you know, oh, let, me really? just, let me just yeah, it was the last time we were we were in bed together and I was just like, let me just use this opportunity to to ask her like, hey, like why I said it just like that. I was like, <laughs> why don't you sh- why don't you show me your boobs? <laughs> you them sometimes. No, you don't. I said just like that. No, you don't. <laughs> and and she was, and then she she didn't say anything. I'm just like, you can't have me be vulnerable and you just hold everything back you got to be vulnerable too yeah it's had to be equal and if you don't feel comfortable being vulnerable then just let's just end it i'm sure she has her reasons yes (laughs) but we'll never know (laughs) we'll never know it's like no one will ever know how many licks it takes to get to the tootsie pop (laughs) Nope. Do you have any particular stories that you would like to share when you got back out there and started dating again? One of them, she she thought that she was interviewing me like Oprah. <laughs> and then and then another one, she lied about her sexuality and and said she was bisexual and instead she was um bi curious. What's like the difference between that for people who don't know? So bisexual is when a man or a woman are sexually attracted to both male and female. Mm -hmm. And by curious, it's in the word itself, the man or woman, they're curious to see what it's like to try the same sex. Mm -hmm. But but they're they're not 100% there. Like they're they're not 100% committed to trying. They're just curious. So she lied and said she was bisexual, you said? Yeah. And, but, but she, she was really bi-curious. Yeah, because gotcha. she wanted she wanted to go, because um, she wanted to secure the date, mm-hmm. she said. And, oh my gosh, she spilled so much about her. <laughs> I feel like every person I've gone on, every woman I've gone on a date with, the first thing they talk about is their ex. Oh yeah, especially when you are on the d- the apps and like yeah, these people just came out of a relationship. I, I don't I don't understand that. I really don't. 
like the like and they're just like chill like they could be chill people and the first thing they're like so tell me about your exes and I'm just like what (laughs) what on the first date (laughs) yeah yeah oh my goodness but you know I I've learned though that for me meeting someone in person is the best for me after attempting dating apps for so long like Mm -hmm. there was one time 2019 or so that okay cupid was like do you want a job you're you're, (laughs) you have you have been with us for so long and i'm like are you kidding me (laughs) wait what i was offered a job because i've been a veteran of okay cupid dude that's so funny (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's just like you know i think i think it's i think it's about time (laughs) <laughs> for me to for me to exit this like I had all the dating apps and mm-hmm. everyone is different and right. I I feel that now I don't want to start off with swiping and oh just just deciphering who I like based on their looks or or whatever or their pictures really their pictures because you know mm-hmm. and their pictures don't reflect how they look in real life most of the time exactly That's and true. um and so I rather, I rather stumble upon someone and just be there. Be, like we can, we can be friends first and then it turns into something because mm. like is stronger than love. You better like that person you're <laughs> with because you won't always love them. True. People grow and people change how they are and what they like. And you have to ask yourself, are you willing to stay along for their journey? Wow. That was deep. yeah because you know a lot of people think oh like the especially high school sweethearts my boss when I was at a talent agency she told she told me because I I was always so I was always so just like annoyed by like everyone getting married after high school like and even in the years in college and I was just like come on and and she was like just wait for the divorces just wait just wait when you get to my just wait and because people, they're not the same people that they were in high school. Right. People change. Mm-hmm. They're not the same person. So, but not everyone is okay with staying along for the ride. Yeah. For their, for their next chapter, not everyone's willing to stay. Yep, that's true. Yeah, especially with people that go, like, move in so fast. Oh, and- yeah get engaged so fast yeah. I mean there are a lot of there are a lot of straight people out there that are also you hauling themselves <laughs> uh, yeah no I agree <laughs> I mean they're you hauling more than lesbians are nowadays yep I feel it <laughs> <laughs> so what was the main reason you decided to just delete everything it just it just you know it just turned into an addiction yeah and I wasn't happy with the person I was turning into while using it. It's just, I wasn't, I was turning into someone that was just so superficial and you should see me now. I, I'm, a, I'm attracted to a lot of people now that aren't, that weren't in, in the range of mm. types that I was, I was only focused on. Wow, that means that you're changing and you're growing. Yes. <laughs> we love to see it. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. That's, yeah, that's really important. And, you know, like your whole journey into like, you know, after a breakup or going to a new relationship or even finding yourself is a very long journey and it, it will not take, you know, two days. Mm-mm. It's very, you know, a, a long process depending on who you are. So like, what would you say are some of the things that you've personally done to like heal or recover from that relationship? I would say therapy. Yeah. Talking with friends and family for a solid year. I was seeing her name literally everywhere Oh my! God. at my job and yeah. at places as character names and stories. And I'm just like, <sighs> what the freaking heck? I'm so done. Like how, and I still see her name. One of the patients at the, at the office I, I, I was working at and furloughed now again, mm-hmm. but, uh, <laughs> thanks but, Corona. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I still just keep a friendship kind mm-hmm. of 
not like I, I would say maybe acquaintances. Yeah, you're not like with best her. buddies or no, anything. No, we're not best buds. We're like acquaintances <laughs> on Snapchat. And so like she may respond to something I pose and we just right. have a little discussion and then we go back to our lives. I think that has helped too, just to know that like we don't hate each other. Mm-hmm. We we're, we don't think each other, we don't think that one is a bad person. It's neutral. It's neutral. Yeah. Yeah, that's so funny that you were saying that you were seeing her name everywhere. I feel like that's the same thing with like people seeing um, their ex's cars like on the street. They're like, oh my God, is that them? (laughs) You know, you know what's so funny as you bring that up? My best friend has the same car and then (sighs) B was angry that I didn't tell her that she had the same car as my best friend but the thing is I didn't want to tell her that because it made things super awkward right oh my god right is that just me or is or or, or would it make things awkward oh yeah it'll be like it'll be like if I'm it'll make me think that I'm hooking up in the back of my best friend's car and I don't want to think about that I don't want to think about that yeah that's a little odd (laughs) you know and she's like why didn't you tell me and I'm like you know I, I, made some, I made some excuse but really I, I just don't want to think about my best friend while I'm in the back of the same car that she drives you know I don't yeah. want to think about that she's been my yeah. best friend since I was three years old I don't want to think about that yeah and you know yeah <laughs> I wouldn't either <laughs> that is really a weird coincidence I know in the same color everything oh my god <laughs> dude like, that's crazy on. What is the one thing that you would say that you learned about yourself and relationships? I've learned to never settle. Mm-hmm. There is always someone better out there that will treat you the way you deserve to be treated. No matter right. how beautiful someone is on the outside, their insides better match it no matter what. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. it's just not worth going on for the ride to just be hurt or just, just know that it's not healthy. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. And that's what like sucks about like the dating apps and like Tinder. You're just basically swiping for a little bit of a caption of their personality and then like a picture of them. And it's not even all of them, you know? Yeah, it's not even like a like a percentage. (laughs) No. No, it's 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 just one of my friends, she's actually trying to get me back into it. I'm just like, no, no. I (laughs) I think uh um, a little more than eight years uh, was enough. Was enough. So yeah. you're single now and you're not dating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're enjoying it though. I am enjoying it. I like having my space. I like saving money because you know when you're in a relationship, you gotta oh. spend money. And you yep. <laughs> and being a broke graduate student was uh, not easy going on dates. Yeah. I was not easy. So I am enjoying being able to save money, um, put it towards saving up for a car, putting it towards the projects. And I just like to do the things I want to do without even thinking about what someone else thinks about it. Perfect. You know? Yep. I, I know the feeling. But there are times, though, I do miss being intimate with someone. Yeah. You know, and it's hard. But I don't want that relationship portion of it right now. I want to mm-hmm. focus on, on getting my career going, building mm-hmm. my production company, Lasada Productions with my writing partner, Seda, and yes. just putting, my, putting our TV and film project together and, and just putting out there for the world. Because we, we strive to put out diversity and just authenticity in every project we put we want to put out there and uh and especially Mm -hmm. targeting the lgbtq plus community Mm -hmm. because there's just not enough good stories out there to be honest it's so hard for me to find one and yeah yeah there's one out there called deadly illusions oh my god i just i saw i saw that i was like what the Dude, did you watch it? I just yeah. watched it the other day. I watched, I watched it. I watched it the other day, and I'm just like, "What the heck is this?" Dude, <laughs> you know, 
the, you know, there was that one, that, there was that one intimate, uh, well, two intimate, well, one really intimate scene. There was like a few. Uh, yeah, a few of them, a few of them, yeah, yeah. And, but that was it. Yeah. That was it, but, but you know, I don't want to watch, I don't want to just watch a movie just for that. I want to watch a movie yeah. because it's actually good, you know? Yeah, I feel like every time I see, like, an LGBTQ movie now it's like they center the whole theme or like the whole plot about like sex yes and I'm literally just like what the heck blue is the warmest color that was basically a porno yes they're all like that like that type of like vibes and it's like this is why people don't watch these if you look if you look up lesbian and, and and images um on google Mm-hmm. you would just see sex exactly if you, if you look up a man if you look if you look up a straight person you yeah know, you see happy couples mm-hmm. why is it like that it needs to I, be changed yeah I know there was um I can't remember it now but like there was like I think they were trying to do it with like maybe I forgot what it was called was it called like love si- Simon or something like that oh love Simon yeah I Love feel Simon. like I watched that a while ago. I feel like it was like kind of decent ish, but maybe yeah. that's just my opinion. But Love, I feel like Love Victor, though, on Hulu. Oh, is yeah, way that one better. too. Yeah, way that better. one too. Yeah. That so one, like, that one, it was the same world, but that, like, because I come from a Hispanic background and that mm-hmm. was like, he is me. I am him. Mm-hmm. Like, we are the same person. Right, right. I feel like they're trying, but like yeah, they're not trying, hard enough. Maybe they need to they need to not make it a big deal about the coming yeah. out portion and just show that these that the LGBTQ plus people are just living normal lives, just like mm-hmm. everyone else. They're just yeah. living, just like taking out the trash, just like a normal person. And <laughs> it's just like and you know, normal is overrated. It's just like right. it's doing just doing things just like the average person would do. And yeah. so the feature film that we're working that we're working on now is like a modern day parent trap Ooh. and uh, and it's like a lesbian parent LGBTQ plus parent trap mm-hmm. and we it is we are including all all sorts of sexualities all sorts of um, disabilities mm-hmm. in there and we're just we're just trying to help to shine on people that don't get enough light shine on them right oh my gosh I love that that's so exciting yeah all right we're so we 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 enjoy just putting it we're we're on our first draft and act two of writing it and we are just having a blast we recorded ourselves on zoom just for one scene (laughs) and we were just like giggling like little kids are like oh my god (laughs) dude oh my gosh we're i having love so it. much fun yeah i can't wait to see it yeah <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna pitch it to all the big people oh nice yeah. well, good luck to you i'm sending all of the good vibes of course thank you thank you oh my gosh i love it so while we end here what kind of advice that you want to share with everyone that you know might be going through this similar situation or like you know trying to get back into dating or finding themselves again whatever it is what would you have to say to them i would say that know that there is no reason to stay in a toxic relationship and that you deserve better i never understood before why it was so hard for people for people to leave those relationships but when you love them it's i see now that it's even harder yeah it is so worth it though to leave it to leave them for your mental health because i for for me mm-hmm. i feel so much better i feel like i'm in a better state of mind i could think clearly of course i go i have my my mental illnesses but i'm even better without that Yes. I love it. Well, I am sending you all the good vibes. Yeah. And everyone else. (laughs) Yeah. And one more thing. Don't let anyone overshine you. If they love you, 
you two can shine under the same light together. Wow. Amen. <laughs> Preach it. Say it louder for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love it. So you guys, if you want to keep up with Lissa and her podcast, you can find her on Instagram at quarantine season podcast. She is on all the platforms where you listen to your podcasts. You can also find her personal Insta at simply Lisi and her poetry Instagram at LR Camacho right? So I'm so happy you came on the podcast. Yes. And thank you everyone else for tuning in. I have so many awesome guests coming up to share their hashtag boyfriend proof story. So stay tuned for that. And if you or someone you know would like to be on the show to share your story, shoot me a DM on Instagram at boyfriend proof podcast. And we'll be back soon for another boyfriend proof story. Goodbye.